Wild Jobs Namibia is proudly brought to you by Vintuk Lager. Namibia, land of the brave. Brave men and women who dedicate their lives to protecting a country of harsh terrain, ancient cultures and vulnerable wildlife. Namibian conservationists Dr. Rudy and Marlies van Furen are on a mission to travel the length and breadth of Namibia to meet these intrepid individuals and to witness the incredible work they undertake on a daily basis. These are the unsung heroes of Namibian conservation and these are their wild jobs. There is one animal which is synonymous with the Namibian bush, the cheetah. These elegant felines glide through tall grass with grace and stealth. Even these magnificent cats face the threat of persecution from humans a threat which conservationists are attempting to combat. A lot of the conflict calls that we get is for cheetahs, and there's a simple reason for that. Namibia has the highest free-roaming cheetah population in the world. When we started with our work in conflict mitigation, we got 34 calls a year. Last year, we got 116 calls. And it's always for us the first prize when we get, get a call about conflict that we can convince the farmer or landowner to release that cheetah there and then, either by collaring it or just releasing it. But sometimes we encounter a situation where the farmer or the landowner do not want to release the animal on his property and we have to take it away. We can never release a true problem animal into an open ecosystem because it's probably going to cause conflict again. The best option for that animal is to go into a fenced reserve where they are protected and cannot get into trouble again. For every cheetah that comes to Nwakusi, we want to ensure the best outcome. It doesn't matter where they come from, what the history is, but the outcome is my responsibility. If the animals come in as babies, I make sure that they grow up and they're healthy and um, that they're in good groups and that they have a good social development, actually. And the important thing is to make sure that we form groups and that we form coalitions if there's weaker ones in there. So if we get individuals in that are single, especially when it's females and they're not that strong, my, my concern is always the personalities, to make sure that you put a strong personality with a weaker one in, if we do translocations and we do releases. We've seen that it does work if we form coalition as young as possible for after, um, to do a release afterwards. Cheetahs, the fastest land mammal on earth, they use their speed to hunt and to survive out in the felt. Although we try and give them a quality life in captivity, it's one thing that they can't do is to run full speed and catch something physically. So what we try and do here in the enclosures is to put a, put a pulley system up where they physically just chase a lure and just run around and get fit and burn energy.
just like your kitten at home, most kittens will play with a ball, a feather, anything. But as they grow older, they stop playing. They save the energy and they rather go catch mice. It's exactly the same with the cheetahs. Uh, if they're young, they like to play and they find everything that moves interesting. But as they grow older, they'll save energy and they'll basically just hunt for survival. In this camp, there is one very special cat that Marlies has raised, Lucky. The cheetah behind me is Lucky, and I got her in basically six years ago. I received a phone call. She was caught in a gin trap and lost only two little toes, but was kept in captivity for almost two weeks, hoping that she would tame and become a pet, and eventually had huge inflammation um, inflammation in the leg, almost like gangrene, it was stinky and pussy by the time we received the phone call. So we went and we picked her up and when she arrived at Nakusi, we had to make a decision. Do we amputate or do we put her down? And we decided we're going to amputate and see. If she struggles in the future with only three legs, then we will make a decision again. But up to now, Lucky is doing perfectly. She's really thriving in captivity and she's playing a huge role in my life also because she's a surrogate mum for young cheetahs that I get in. Lucky teaches the young ones independence and she's also the dominant figure in, in the, the enclosure and she's helping us tremendously for um, releases afterwards. But just to show you guys how dangerous these gin traps actually are, Okay, just broke my stick. Um, they are, they've got a hook on the one side and if an animal, now an eight month old baby cheetah is caught in something like this, it breaks the leg. She was lucky just to lose two toes, but it will break the leg and this poor animal will be stuck there till somebody comes. By that time they normally basically try to escape so they break everything and tore everything off and it's a horrible death if, if you don't arrive the same day but dehydration, stress, animals will die just to just getting caught by the foot in this gin trap. It's horrible. Wild Jobs Namibia is proudly brought to you by Vintuk Lager. Wild Jobs Namibia is proudly brought to you by Vintuk Lager. Of all the cheetahs being looked after at Nankuse, there is one very special old lady, Samira. Samira is an example of a cat who would not survive in the wild and therefore needs to remain in the safety of captivity. It sometimes happens that people get baby animals in, wild baby animals, out of the wild, and then it happens that people put them on the wrong diets. Cheetahs on dark pellets, meerkats on mincemeat, and that doesn't work always. The thing is that that diet often causes complications for the animal. Samira is an excellent example of that and she presented with severe uh, teeth problems. One of her teeth migrated into her sinus, forming a cavity, an abscess, and that caused a sinus that constantly had some pus draining through it. And uh, Ian Baines, our vet, operated her eventually and found this tooth that migrated into the sinus and we removed it. And since then, she's, she's been okay. She's now got only three teeth left in her whole mouth. We've, we have to give her small pieces of meat, no solids, no bones, no cartilage in there, no chicken. The only pe meat she can actually eat is if we debone everything. So we have to put extra calcium and magnesium and whatever on there. And every winter I, I have my doubts of her making that winter because she, she's skinny, she doesn't look good, her, her fur is not healthy, she's just very old also, so that all the odds are against her. And, so every winter we just pray for her to make it.
In a camp nearby, there are some much younger and friskier adolescent cubs. A couple of weeks ago, we picked up these three cheetah cubs from a farmer, um, approximately 100 kilometers from here. The first prize would have been if the farmer was willing to release the cheetahs there and then. But it was difficult to convince him because he actually saw them on a carcass, on a, one of his cattle carcasses. And so we had no choice but to bring them here. And what we're going to do today is we're just going to sedate them and then we're going to put a microchip in for identification. They've been in a quarantine camp now for plus minus four weeks where they see people regularly and people walking past constant. So the idea is now to move them to a big enclosure with other cheetahs and don't expose them to people that much. Right, let's go. In order to microchip the cubs and move them to their new camp, they must first be sedated. all three cats fast asleep, Rudy and Marlies move in to begin the microchipping. By creating a database of Namibia's captive carnivores, breeding in captivity, which could fuel the exotic pet trade or the cruel world of canned hunting, does not occur. The microchips inserted successfully, these three are now going to be transported to their new camp. We've moved these three little ones now to a smaller enclosure just next to Lucky's camp. And the idea is to wake them up, let them settle in, really relax, get to know the others next door, so the neighbors get the politics sorted, and then we will slowly reintroduce them into that group. And the idea with this is, Lucky is like a surrogate mum. She's got only three legs, so she can't cause too much damage to the little ones, and she can't grow up alone, and she can't stay alone in captivity for the rest of her life. So it's companionship, but she's also the surrogate mum that just disciplined the little ones a little bit. And I've seen that in the past that if she's, um, if it's a good temperament cat that the little ones get introduced to, they tend to calm down and they're not aggressive. So if we ever want to release them into a closed reserve, any game parks, we have to get them to settle down, don't be too aggressive. And these are three boys and they will grow up and become really strong cheetah males. So the plan is just let them calm down, get them in there, let them grow up and become really beautiful cheetah males. Wild Jobs Namibia is proudly brought to you by Vintuk Lager. Wild Jobs Namibia is proudly brought to you by Vintuk Lager.
We are here in Solitaire now, in the beautiful Namib. And as usual, the Namib is nice and cool at 42 degrees Celsius. And we are here to um, dart Pepper, one of the cheetahs in this enclosure. Um, her collar that she has, the battery ran out now after two years and we need to change that collar. So we're gonna look for her uh, in this 500 hectare enclosure. Paper ended up with us two years ago. Um, it was people from the south that had her and that raised her and they sold their farm and moved to Winter. And yeah, that's how she ended up with us and she's now in this huge enclosure. Cara, do you think we can look for her? Yeah, we can just go on straight with this road. We'll, we'll get her. Okay. Eventually. Alright, we finished with Pepper. We've swapped the collar, we've put on a new collar and so for the next two years we'll have signals on her and we can monitor her movements within the camp, make sure she's okay, make sure she's healthy. It's unfortunate for cats like Pepper that they have to stay in captivity for the rest of their lives just because they were either taken or shot by, mommy's been shot by people and then taken into captivity and they lose their fear for people. They don't run away anymore. So these cats has to go into some sort of captivity, either if it's 500 hectares or 5,000 hectares, they still have to be in fenced areas. And unfortunately, this is now what Pepper's life is going to be like. And that's what we try and do at Nagusi and here in Solitaire is to give them as much freedom as possible. Namibia has got the largest free roaming population of cheetahs in the world. In fact, a third of the total population is right here in Namibia. And it makes me proud to be a Namibian. And we've done something right, if you think about it. I think there's two important factors when it comes to successful cheetah conservation in Namibia. The first is that there's a couple of organizations that have worked together successfully for the conservation of the cheetah. Secondly, I think it's important to know that people associate with cheetahs and there's a reason for that. Some cheetahs can be tamed and then people can see them in movies and in films and it's that association that makes them a charismatic species and cheetahs are conserved successfully. And of course it's just nice to go and walk with a cheetah. Come Kiki, let's go. Coming up in next week's episode of Wild Jobs Namibia, Rudy and Marlies meet the farmers who have to deal with the wild up close. They are in the felt every day, they know the animals and that drives conservation in our country.
Wild Jobs Namibia is proudly brought to you by Vintage Lager.